Hi, I'm Ron Poet, and this is Software Engineering for Master Students. So uh, let's say a bit about myself. So first of all, share the screen. Here we go. That's it. So there's my room, but uh, I'm not in there these days. I'm working from home. There's my email that will get uh, to me. Now, my research field is cybersecurity. Uh, but as far as software engineering goes, I've consulted with a number of organizations uh, out in the real world. So my software engineering experience is more on the practical side rather than the academic or theoretical side. <clears throat> so um, I was, I've been involved in object-oriented analysis and design in, uh, in my consulting work, uh, object-oriented programming, and uh, so this is back in the days where OMG stood for Object Management Group. So I was in, um, involved with them to a certain extent. I also worked with Fred Brooks for a year at the University of North Carolina. So this was a sabbatical year. So Fred Brooks is quite famous in the area because he wrote the first software engineering book called The Mythical Man Month. So as a relatively young man in his late 20s, he was put in charge of the IBM uh, OS 360 operating system um, construction. And so that was the operating system that ran uh, a whole bunch of mainframes and IBM mainframes in that era. Okay, uh, after doing that, I introduced object-oriented design and programming to the um, School of Computing Science here, and also programming with Java. And uh, I introduced them as part of the MSC IT program. So the IT students were the first in the school to get modern uh, object-oriented design and modern programming with Java. All right, so what's this course about? Uh, now, you're learning to program. And so you've got lots of small, pro well, a series of small programs in the programming lab. And um, as programs get bigger and bigger, they get more complex. And uh, so, whereas you can just sit down and write a program from scratch, if it's fairly small, uh, the bigger the program gets, the more you need to do some preparatory work beforehand. So designing before coding becomes more important. And especially, this is especially true as systems become larger. So, Eventually, we'll reach a stage where programs can't be written by one person, they're just too big. So programming in teams is important. And uh, in this semester, we'll be focusing on, on this aspect of uh, software engineering. So working together, uh, working with customers and making sure we do what the customer wants. So um, again, your programming exercises you'll be told exactly what um, you have to do and it'd be unambiguous. Typically, if you uh, speak with a real customer, they will have a vague idea of what they want to do and they won't really be able to express it in technical terms. So leading to lots of opportunity for ambiguity and uh, getting the wrong end of the stick. So that's programming with teams, uh, quality of assurance, uh, how do we know the program works as intended? So um, that that will come down to testing. How do we find bugs and what documentation is needed? So all these questions are important, especially when you have several people involved, several developers and customers as well, then uh, good documentation isn't necessary. Right, so let's say a bit about large systems now. As systems get larger, there are more details to remember. They become more complex. And uh, most of this complexity is intrinsic to the problem, so we can't get rid of it. But in some cases, the way that we produce the software will introduce additional complexity. And that's something we've got control over. So we want to reduce the this in additional complexity complexity by using the best techniques. But um, there are always, always will be quite difficult aspects that we can't get rid of. Uh, so we need to cope with them. Right, now teaching this is quite hard. 
And the reason is quite simply, um, we can't give you actual practical work of uh, a reasonable scale. So we can't uh, get you to be part of a team of six people say, and produce a piece of software over a year. So there's just not enough time in the, the calendar. So um, the best we can do is the summer project where as a single person, you've got three months to produce uh, a piece of software. So that's quite challenging. And also uh, we have um, team programming where you do a small project, uh, just a 10 credit course um, as part of a team to introduce those two aspects. But um, these are not uh, to the scale of uh, real world problems. So uh, the problem is that it's possible to get these uh, things work in the projects and the team project by using bad techniques and uh, you just hack things, you can just hack things together and they will work and you won't get found out. Uh, so um, we, it's quite difficult to try and teach you techniques that will scale up because uh, it's possible for you to avoid, avoid our advice and do it a different way and still get some work in software. So anyway, we'll teach you scalable techniques and you'll have to trust us that they work. And uh, we'll, we'll have an incentive that you will give marks for good techniques. So uh, when you have assessed exercises, you won't get, just get marks for getting it uh, working, but you'll get marks for getting it working in the correct way. <clears throat> right, teams then. So large systems can only be developed by a team. So what are the additional um, issues that we get with team working? Obviously, communication between team members. So uh, how do we make sure uh, team members can work together? So um, typically, this is done by having a shared office. So everyone works together in the same office. Um, obviously, we can't do that this year for your uh, team exercise uh, for this course. <coughs> but there are um, team management uh, tools that we can use. Uh, and we will be using them so that you can communicate with your team members that way. So anyway, communication between team members is uh, an important issue and that can be quite challenging in, in the current um, COVID environment. Leadership now, um, uh, how does someone make sure things happen? That's essentially the point of leadership. Maintaining a single code base with more than one contributor. So. If several people are writing the code, how do we uh, make sure that we've got one consistent um, uh, version of the, of the code? Um, so the various team members will be adding bits and pieces to the code from time to time. And how can we do that consistently? All right, um, another more subtle point, maintaining a consistent vision of the software with changing team compositions. So um, a, a good principle to get something working is, is for one person to have a vision about how things should um, work and to share this vision with other members of the team. And so making that consistent is a challenge uh, with team working. Uh, monitoring progress. So how do we know that our project is working well? So there's an old adage in software engineering that the first 90% of the time uh, of the work takes the first 90% of the time and the second 90% of the work takes the second 90% of the time. So essentially, uh, as a rule of thumb, things take twice as long as you expect, more or less. So, um, so we want to avoid the problem where everything is fine, everything is fine, everything is fine week before the deadline, and then we discover a big problem. So that's the whole point about monitoring progress. And dealing with unexpected delays. Uh, software projects seldom go smoothly. Uh, there's a high likelihood that there will be unexpected delays. So we need a process in place for dealing with them. All right, customers. Uh, a lot of software is commissioned by customers, especially out in um, uh, the software industry. Industry. 
So there are customers cause problems. It would be ideal if uh, there were no customers in the world. It's so easy to write software then, uh, but customers actually pay for the software. So we need customers. So how do we specify exactly what we want to do? So we need to get that from the customer. The customer needs to tell us. Um, assuring the customer that it has been done. So if, it, if the customer is a diligent customer, they will want um, things in place so that when we deliver a piece of software, they'll be able to test it and show that uh, we've delivered what they've asked for. Uh, deciding on the scope of the work, what are we going to do? What are we not going to do? And uh, so uh, an insidious problem with software development is gold plating. So we make the project better than it needs to be. And so therefore more expensive than it needs to be. And also mission creep, where we start with a simple product, we keep on adding features until it gets uh, unmanageable. So deciding on the scope is an important feature. Prioritizing the work, the project is going to be made up of lots of pieces. So um, one of the important issues in the design process when we're designing software is to split the software up into pieces and do all of the pieces one at a time or several at a time, but in, in order. So we need to prioritize which pieces are more important than the others so that we can get them done first. And so this is quite useful if the project goes over budget or uh, looks like it's gonna take longer than we expect. And one way of coping with that is de-scoping. So we decide some things will not be done in the first release and we'll delay them for a second release. So uh, we can only do that if we have priorities, what's important, what's not important, so that the unimportant things or less important things can be put off. Um, esting, estimating costs at the start of the project. So this is a very tricky business, but it's necessary as well. It's tricky because usually when we start a project, we don't really know the exact details of what we're going to do. And so therefore estimating how much work it's going to take is going to be fuzzy. It's very difficult to get decent estimates. On the other hand, in many, if not most projects, one of the things we do in the initial negotiation stage is work, work out how much the project is going to cost. And we really do need to get that, um, a good estimate for that at the very start so that we can budget for it uh, we might be bidding against several other software firms for this particular piece of work. And so we'll have to estimate how much we're going to charge. And that's got to be a good estimate so that we can not only get the work, because it's um, low enough, not, it's not too high, but we can actually then make a profit from doing the work afterwards. And finally, uh, the big problem with customers is they change their requirements. So how do we deal with this? So the customer gets some idea of what they want to do at the start. Once we've got going, then um, they learn a bit more about what the product really can do, and then they decide exactly what they want, which might be different. So we need techniques for dealing with that as well. Um, quality assurance. How do we know the program works? And this is usually done by devising test cases and test data. So this is an important part of not just the design of the software, but the analysis stage right at the start when we're working out what we're going to do. So uh, before we even start uh, coding, we want to know what tests we're gonna run and um, what data the tests will uh, operate on. So that's, how we know that the program works. So when we've uh, finished that piece, particular piece of software, then um, we can run the tests and the tests will uh, have to be passed. And the tests verify that we've done the right stuff and it works. So that's, that's um, from looking from the outside, producing tests. Actual programming, um, there are different styles of programming. Some are safer than others. So I'll be introducing a safe programming style 
for that uh, in the second semester when we get down to the more detailed design of software. Um, unit tests and regression tests, what are these? Uh, I've mentioned we split the software up into little chunks and we test each chunk. So these chunks are units and they have unit tests. So each chunk has its own bunch of tests. Um, as we go along, we discover bugs or we change things slightly. And so we then need to redo the tests and uh, that's regression testing. So a uh, piece of software has passed the test, we go and change the software and so we have to test it again. And this can become really tedious, so automated, te automated testing is necessary in industrial scale projects. projects. Right, um, finding bugs, so debugging and debuggers are also useful tools when we write programs. And finally, documentation. So we need to document what we've done so that um, we can prove that uh, our tests have worked, for example. So document the tests that have made and the results that uh, we've got. Okay, so that's uh, a bit about what the course is about. So let's look at the course aims in detail. So in, introduce the basic cost, concept of software engineering project management in the small. So we'll basically be doing mainly that this semester. Um, generic components of requirements gathering and specification. Again, that's something we'll do this semester as project management style. Um, so find requirements gathering, find out what the customer wants us to do. Uh, present methods for design, implementing, testing and documentation of object oriented programs. That's next semester when we get on to the design details. Uh, similarly, program comprehension and design skills. Um, so then familiarizing students with inherent problems and components of managing software development projects. Uh, again, that's just, this is first this semester that we'll cover that. So we're mainly covering software project management this semester. And then think about the economic, legal, social, ethical, and other implications of uh, the use of IT. So we'll have a, a small section on that covering professional codes uh, in the IT industry. So learning outcomes. Carry out requirements analysis and write a requirements definition. We'll do that this semester. That'll be this next exercise. Great UML class diagrams and uh, model aspects of the domain and software solutions. That's next semester. Apply design principles and patterns while designing and implementing simple systems. A design pattern is a standard thing that crops up all the time, uh, many different times. So it's a standard problem with a standard solution. And so that's uh, another thing to look forward to for next semester. We'll be looking at design patterns. Um, so this is uh, good practice in various different um, uh, design situations. We'll also be looking at anti-patterns, which is standard bad mistakes in um, solving uh, standard problems. To carry out testing the programs and apply simple measurement techniques to software. Again, that's uh, going to be second semester. Produce clear, concise and sufficient formal documentation appropriate for the design and development of existing systems and programs developed in practical exercises. So this is both this semester and next semester. In this semester, we'll focus on the analysis and the, um, some high level design and we'll need appropriate documentation for that. Apply a variety of project management techniques to software project management scenarios of varying complexity. So we'll, we'll cover that this semester. So there are several different project management techniques that we'll cover. Um, then there's the uh, social, legal, ethical and environmental um, issues and discuss the breadth of software engineering and project management practices. So there's an over, overview again of different project management techniques. So the course structure, this course is worth 15 credits. So 
Um, it's larger than most of the other courses. It's taught over two semesters. So the first semester is worth five credits. So it's half of a standard size course. And uh, semester two is 10 credits. It's just like the other modules you'll get in semester two. Online teaching. So this year, uh, it's all going to be online. So I'll produce a number of uh, video lectures. Here's one of them, first one. And uh, I'll put them on to Moodle together with the supporting material and the slides and the like. Uh, each lecture will have a number of questions that you should prepare answers to. And so there'll be one Zoom lecture each week where I'll go over the questions, discuss the solutions, and it'll also give you uh, the opportunity to ask general questions about the course. So that's the bit of interaction that will happen. Um, these Zoom lectures all will all be 12 o'clock on Wednesdays and we're going to start not this week but next week. So the first one of these will be Wednesday the 27th of January. Assessment. 70% uh, is in the summer exam. There's a 10% uh, team exercise this semester and 20% team exercise next semester. Uh, the teams will be four people and you can choose your own teams. But um, if you're having trouble becoming part of a team, then I'll form the teams as, um, if you prefer. So uh, this semester, we'll use an agile approach to analyze a problem and produce a high level design. And then next semester, you'll produce the low level design and implementation of part of the uh, part of your system. Uh, so that's worth 20%. So that's um, the assessment. So notice that most of the marks come from the summer exam. So how to do well. Uh, if you want to do well, you want to get good marks in the summer exam. So uh, attend all the classes, learn as you go, and don't try and mug up the course just before the exam, as it can't be done. So that's one point, learn as you go. Secondly, don't spend too much time trying to get an A on the assessed exercises. There's a great temptation to spend an enormous amount of work, maybe even putting off learning the course itself, just to get an A in the bank, so to speak. But um, most of the marks are in the exam and that approach has a detrimental uh, effect on learning the course. And you'll find that you'll do less well in the exams where most of the marks are. So, um, spend a reasonable amount of time in the assessed exercise, but don't worry if you get a B or a C, because uh, most of them are, as long as you are learning the course, then you'll do well in the exam. Right, textbooks now. Semester one, there's a book on agile project management, and it's, um, it's a lightweight project management similar and it uses scrum which is an agile technique that most companies use semester two there's object-oriented design uh, a book and design patterns which are standard solutions to common design problems okay so uh, that's the end of the introduction so i'll um so We'll then start looking at agile uh, techniques in, in the next lecture.